the first stop on our mountainside adventure takes us to the City of Angels. But we're not here to see the sights. Piers and I are leaving downtown LA behind and winding high into the Santa Monica Mountains where one homeowner built her dream home from the most unthinkable reused building material. Okay, hang on. Uh, oh, no, that's wrong. So we're Sorry. California. We're here. Uh, oh. you're, looking at, you're looking at Arizona, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> the woman who, who owns this house, has built this house, spent years looking for the right plot of land. She I mean, did. 15, 15 years. years. 15 years. But she did look all over the world. And all over the world, as long as it was within an hour of a city. And she obviously thinks she's found the place to be with views of the sea and the mountain. It's living the dream, isn't living it? Living the dream. The owner of our first mountainside retreat wanted a building with feminine curves that would sit lightly on this coastal mountain range. So her architect looked at the skies and found inspiration in the most unlikely of places. The house we're going to see is a proper statement. It's a proper statement, and what's clever about it is that it's crazy, but it's still, I think, architecturally really fascinating. And when it comes to making a statement, it doesn't get any bigger than this. and tail fins of a disused Boeing 747, this award-winning house is one of a kind. There it is. <sighs> You've got to be happy with that piece. Extraordinary. Let's have a look at this. by how beautiful it is yeah, being here. Yeah. This is so quirky. It's lovely seeing the wings against the sky, isn't it? The thin edges. It's, it's outrageous, it is, actually. It is. So how does an architect go about acquiring a disused Boeing 747? Well, in the middle of the Californian desert, there's a graveyard of retired aeroplanes. Once her architect had convinced her, Francie, a retired Mercedes-Benz dealer and the owner of this house, spent less than $50,000 on a decommissioned Boeing 747. Using precision laser technology, the wings were then removed and used to create the roofs of this unconventional house. I like being under the wing. Me too. I think it's really comforting. Yeah. So it is, I mean, it is like a bird's wing in a way, isn't it? This would also encourage the breeze across it because you could open those windows at the back on a really hot day because aircraft wings are designed to bring air under them. So, yeah, so yeah. this would be naturally yeah. ventilated. And actually planes, remember, are the best engineered things in the world. So everything is beautifully made, beautifully put together, incredibly durable, the best materials. I mean, architects are obsessed by nuts and bolts and fixings yeah. and how things are made. and. It is a beautiful, beautiful thing. But at the same time, it looks quite homemade, doesn't it? It does. All well, the little squares. <laughs> yeah, what, surprising. What, what's the metal? Aluminium. Uh, so little squares of aluminium just sort of riveted together. Yeah, well, it would have been patched, actually, and repaired over the years. Because, oh, you know, they use for 40 years or something. The concrete and, this, uh, uh, and the metal going up to the wing. Mm. That, that works. It does. I mean, it's designed so that the glass is the thing that, by and large, touches it. So you always see the shape. At ground level, this eccentric building blends seamlessly into the mountainous landscape. But from the air, the shape of the wings is clearly visible. There was a real risk that pilots could confuse it for a downed plane. So the project had to be registered and cleared with 17 government agencies, including Homeland Security. I want to go on that wing now. I think we should. I'm going to leap up. Oh, show off. 
Here we go, just another day on the wing of a 747. <laughs> just enjoying ourselves. Taking flight. Striding yeah. out. Cool. It's quite spectacular, isn't it? I mean, this, you know, this is incredible, really. And actually, oh, wow, it's quite bouncy here. <laughs> <laughs> Piers, stop it! I just think we're going to have to get in sync. <laughs> With two wings, two tail fins, and a 55-acre plot to play with, the architect was able to create a main house and a guest house for the owner. The 747 wings are the perfect curvilinear design to float on top of the two buildings to maximize the views while providing a roof which requires minimal structural support. Concrete rear supporting walls were built into the hillside and enclosed with panoramic glass facades, allowing light to enter the living spaces throughout the day. The wings were then positioned on top of steel frame supports and secured where the engines were previously mounted. I love it outside, but Piers, let's go in. Let's go. Let's go in. <laughs> Stepping inside this two-bedroom home, you immediately get a sense of how effective the wings really are. It's yeah. great. Yeah. It's actually almost better inside because it reads as a, yeah. an abstract bit of art yeah. up there. That is a great view up there, isn't lovely. it? Lovely, yeah, lovely. Like a mini, like a little mini invitation to go upstairs and see up there. And there's more creative use of recycled plane parts. This section of the fuselage has been turned into a hatch through from the study to the kitchen. It's nice from the back, this. Very nice. Isn't it? Seeing all those rivets and so on. Heading upstairs takes you above the wing to the master bedroom. It's beautiful. This is my best bit. Me too. Is it? Well, you get a view and the plane, and you're right under these two tail fins. Look at this. It's a set, isn't yeah. it, really? It's not actually real mountains. It's a very well-painted backdrop from a Hollywood movie. It is. And looking out and seeing the wing at the end is so surreal, isn't it? I don't think I'd ever tire of looking at those mountains. After interviewing over a dozen architects, the person Francie entrusted with building on her mountainside plot was Californian architect and now friend, David Hertz. So you've been having some fun here. We have. Francie's brief was to create a tranquil, eco-friendly home. And the inspiration for the design came to David at 30,000 feet. I was flying and I was looking out at the wing and thinking about uh, what to do to float a roof. And then it occurred to me, why try to build a wing when you could appropriate a wing? I wanted something that was feminine. And it seems that having a wing is not feminine at all. However, once it's detached from the plane, it becomes an entity uh, unto itself. And there's beautiful curves to it. They're very subtle. It's a brave leap, though, yeah. to have the idea, but to actually, in reality, then say to someone, OK, David, go and bring those wings up the mountain. At any point did you think, I've made a terrible mistake here, I've employed a I madman? Did. did you? Yeah. <laughs> did you? Did you? At which point? Uh, when it was too late. <laughs> yeah. The biggest challenge Francie and David had to face was transporting the wings of the 747 onto the remote mountainside location, a thousand feet above sea level. The majority of the journey was by road, which required a state patrolled escort and the closure of five freeways. But the roads to Francie's mountain retreat were too small for trucks, so the final leg of the journey had to be one of pure military precision.
one of the largest cargo lifting helicopters in the world was drafted in to airlift the wings up onto the mountain. There, there was a lot of risk with the helicopter. I mean, they made it very clear that if, if in any way that it started to turn or catch too much wind, they were just going to drop it. They were going to drop it? Yeah. What was it like as it loomed across, hanging from a helicopter, coming here? Well, it was quite a challenge to realize that part of my budget would go towards hiring a sky crane helicopter. I was like, oh my God. With all the unknowns, there was huge financial risk. There was. It was a, a, a hell of a lot more than initially uh, what was expected. No one had ever built something like this before. We are talking about millions of dollars, aren't we? You are. Millions and millions of dollars? Let's just leave it at that. There were a lot of surprises that brought the cost to the point that it did. I, I use the analogy as when you're, when you're three quarters of the way ready to give birth, you can't turn back. It absolutely. You can't turn back no. and you just keep going. I mean, it sounds exhausting for everybody involved, but is it worth it, Francie, to have, to go through what you've gone through to live here? 100%, yes. Yes, it is. It's a phenomenal environment. It's so very, very beautiful. And every day is a complete and utter joy. And I feel so lucky. It is lovely. Yeah. It's lovely. Thank you. We're not leaving. Uh huh. That's why I have Stay. only one guest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> As the sun starts to drop behind the mountains, what better way to enjoy the view than a sunset wing walk? Thank you so much for the most extraordinary day. It's been really wonderful. A toast, if I may, to the wing house. Ah. The wing house! What's really interesting is that despite it being quite a sensible house in terms of how they describe it, actually, it's really romantic. It is. Sort of dream come it true. Is. It is. By the mountains. 